So I went to go see the new Sonic movie, and after watching it, I gotta say, Sonic the Hedgehog the movie is basically an anime. More on that, but before I continue, I do want to say up front that I have never been a fan of Sonic. None of the characters have ever really grabbed my attention in a positive way. I've always found Sonic to be one of those characters that just tries too hard to be cool, you know, like, and he just won't, you know, shut up. It gets really annoying. Why do people always have to talk all the time? They just keep talking on and on and on. They don't get the hint that people don't want to listen to them talk and it gets really annoying, so why don't they just shut their face? Luckily, I'm not like that. Honestly, though, not even the games were all that good to me. Even the best Sonic game I ever played to me is just okay. So, with that being said, the movie was actually pretty good. Not great, alright? I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but I can't help but admit that I actually had fun watching this. I left the theater with the same satisfaction I had when I watched Detective Pikachu. Both those movies are based off video games, and video game movies tend to suck. We all know this. But now I think the pattern is being broken. But Zack, you handsome blue beast of the hidden leaf, if you don't like Sonic, why did you go see the movie? Great question. For one, I love Jim Carrey, he's my favorite comedian, so that was interesting enough, but then the makers of the movie did the unexpected. They did something I appreciate the heel out of. To the point where I made it my mission to watch this movie the night it came out, which is something I never do. I've gotten to see movies on the day it came out, but never the night before you, you know, the, the midnight premieres. You guys know what I'm talking about. I never do those, but for this movie I did because they actually went back and fixed Sonic. We all remember that hilariously awful trailer with Gangster's Paradise and, you know, that, that was supposed to be Sonic. The memes were everywhere, and as much as I love the memes, I still was kind of annoyed that they actually went with this design. Like, they, they took one look at it, and they were just like, oh yeah, people will love this. The backlash was so bad from the fans who wanted Sonic to actually look, well, like Sonic. It was so massive, so unbelievably powerful. It was like it was over 9,000. You're welcome. The filmmakers actually responded by saying, all right, you know what? We're gonna delay the movie, and we're gonna spend a crap ton more money to go back and fix Sonic. When I found this out, I couldn't believe it. I was blown away. You see, they really didn't have to fix Sonic. They could have just said, suck it up and give us your money, which is something Disney does all the time, by the way. But that's a discussion for another time. I appreciated the fact that they were willing to fix Sonic, knowing full well it would cost more money. And we're not talking just, you know, a couple more dollars here, right? We're talking a lot more money. I wanted to show my appreciation by watching the Sonic movie as soon as I could. And Sonic does look a lot better, I can say that. Jim Carrey was the best part of this overall fun movie, I can say that. The other cast of characters weren't all that great, but they were still fine, I can say that. Sonic was still way too talkative, but he did actually have some visual humor that I liked. So I do want to encourage everyone to see this movie. Even if you're like me and you don't like Sonic, still go watch the movie, because this movie needs to do well. Otherwise, filmmakers will never listen to the audience ever again. Okay, now that I finally got all that out of the way, let's get to the main reason you most likely clicked on this video. Thanks for that, by the way. Be sure to uh, subscribe and like and you know, all that jazz. Sonic the movie is basically an anime. What do I mean by that? Well, Sonic likes to follow some anime tropes that are very familiar to us hardcore and even not so hardcore weebs. To explain, I'm going to have to get into spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen the movie, and again, you should go see and support the cause, go ahead and stop watching this video and come back to it once you have. Otherwise, let's get started. So the movie starts out with Sonic being chased by Jim Carrey, also known as Dr. Robotnik, also known as Eggman, and for the rest of the video, I'm just calling him Eggman because reasons. The movie freezes on Sonic narrating to us. We then rewind to Sonic and his home world around what is basically Green Hill Zone from the OG Sonic game. If you know, you know. After running around, he heads back to his house where he is being taken care of by a giant owl. Yeah, okay, stay with me. No hedgehog parents, a giant owl. Again, stay with me. And then the movie goes from 0 to 60 real quick, as they are attacked by bad guys who appear to be those uh, Knuckles guys. The, the I don't know what kind of animal that's called. It's like an enchilada or something. 
And they're attacking, you know, Sonic, you know, because they're bad guys. And <laughs> what, what else are they supposed to do? I think they want Sonic because they want his super speed. And I, I guess they think if they capture him, they can somehow steal his power. Or maybe they just want him dead because they're bad guys. And, you know, like I said, that that's what they do. So now Sonic and Owl are trying to escape, and Owl gives Sonic a bag of magic rings and says use these whenever you are discovered to run away to a new world. Turns out these rings are actually teleporters to make them work, and this is what you gotta do, okay? I'm not joking, I'm about to explain how these magic rings work. You just think of where you want to appear, throw the ring, and then boom! The ring becomes bigger and you see the place you were thinking of and you just run into the ring. The rings work by just thinking and believing. How many times in anime have you seen something work by a character just believing it will work? Like there's no logic behind it, it's just, you gotta believe. So now our blue furry friend Sonic is on Earth for about 10 years. And no one besides Crazy Carl knows he's real. Don't ask me who Crazy Carl is. Again, just go watch the movie, or, you know, I assume you already have seen the movie, so you know who I'm talking about. So Sonic is now in a new world where he must survive. Kind of reminds me of some animes I've seen. I mean, sure, anime is not the only form of media that has done this, but I feel like it's definitely the more prominent one. You know, you can probably think of a few animes where main character is in one world, then he's or she is transported to a different world and now they gotta you know figure out how to live in that new world i i mean come on guys we've seen him plenty of times in anime so sonic is lonely right and he goes on an empty baseball field one night and plays baseball with himself yes it's as sad as it sounds in fact it is so sad that this gets him angry and for some random reason he lets his anger out by running around the baseball field a bajillion times and while he's doing this his quills glow blue and electricity shoots out of his body causing a huge power outage across the town which by the way is called green hills so sonic his power becomes more powerful when he's angry now this might make you think of the Hulk, which yeah, okay, I see it, but I'm pretty sure there are plenty of anime protagonists that get more powerful because they get emotional. Again, it makes no sense. This isn't just an adrenaline rush for Sonic, okay? Like how humans can get their adrenaline up when they're angry, making them a bit stronger and more fired up. No, this is Sonic glowing blue and shooting lightning out of his body because he's sad and angry that he's lonely. I'm not saying this is stupid, okay? I'm saying this is anime. And as we all know, anime is never stupid. That's just a fact of life. The earth is flat, chocolate mills come from chocolate cows, dinosaurs never existed, and anime is never stupid. It's common knowledge. So this massive power outage causes the government to bring in Eggman to solve the problem. Eggman, because even though he is pretty weird and crazy and completely reeking of evil, he also happens to be the smartest man on the planet. And only the smartest man on the planet could possibly figure out what caused the blackout. Eggman equals anime Avilion. He's weird, he's crazy, he's mean, he feels superior, but what really seals the deal is his mannerisms. Eggman moves and talks like a crazy anime character, and like I said, he's the best part of the movie. Jim Carrey has always been capable of those over-the-top movements and expressions, and he's not holding back in this film, alright? Now, for any of you true blue Sonic fans out there, I don't know if this is how Eggman is in the games, but if he isn't, he should be, because watching Eggman in this movie is a blast. Okay, so now we've got the anime-type protagonist and the anime-type antagonist, and now they just spend the rest of the movie trying to outdo each other as Sonic tries to escape Earth. Sonic meets Tom, you know, the guy from Enchanted. Classic anime, by the way. Tom, frightened by this clearly normal-looking hedgehog, shoots him with a trank gun, which causes Sonic to drop a ring, opening a teleporter to San Francisco, and he, Sonic, that, that's Sonic I'm talking about, drops his whole bag of rings through the teleporter and then knocks out. The only reason it was San Francisco, by the way, is because the last thing Sonic saw before passing out was Tom's shirt, which happened to have a words San Francisco and a few buildings on it as well. Boy, it's a good thing he wasn't wearing, like, a Minecraft shirt or something. Oh, good luck getting those back, Sonic. I would have preferred he was wearing a Smash Brothers shirt, so then that way Sonic would enter Smash and a video game cinematic universe would be confirmed. 
I mean, we already have Pikachu and Jigglypuff and Greninja and Pokemon Trainer and Mario and Luigi. All we need is Tyler Hecklin to play Captain Falcon and Scarlett Johansson to play Samus and bada boom, bada bang, we got ourselves a Nintendo Avengers baby. Make it happen, Sony. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Tom agrees to help Sonic get his rings back because, I mean, how else are they going to progress the plot? Meanwhile, Eggman is hot on their trail. You see, Eggman found one of Sonic's quills in Tom's house. And when he realized the power contained in just one of Sonic's quills, which is a lot, by the way, he became more determined to capture Sonic and use his power for, uh, I don't know, world domination, I guess. Again, like any good anime villain would do. At one point, Eggman is chasing Sonic and Tom down a highway, and this scene right here is full anime. You see, Sonic would repeatedly blow up Eggman's assault vehicle, and just when you think the bad guy is beaten, he comes back in a new form. Granted, each form is smaller than the next, but the point still remains! How many times in anime have you seen the bad guy get taken down only for them to get up and reveal their true powerful form? Only for them to lose again, but then they're, you know, they're gonna rise again and they're like, Baka, you thought that was my true all-powerful form? <laughs> that was only 5% of my power. This is my true all-powerful form for realsies this time. And they just keep going, and going, and going, and going, and going, until finally, you take them down. Until suddenly! So after Eggman's assault machines are finally beaten, Tom takes a wounded Sonic to his wife's sister's home to ask for help. In the process of this happening, Sonic gets new shoes that are somehow better and won't wear out like his old ones? Even though these shoes don't have any special powers? They're just regular red shoes designed just like the video games. But because they were a gift, suddenly they become immune to wear and tear that would happen at the speed that Sonic runs. Anime. Kinda reminds me of a uh, Natsu scarf, honestly. Like, Natsu's clothes will rip apart and get torn to shreds whenever he's in a fight or some chaotic situation, but his scarf will usually be just fine. Now, yes, I know it's because it's made of dragon scales or something like that, but guys, let's just be honest. It's because it was a gift from his dragon daddy and has a lot of sentimental value. And in anime, sentimental items don't always obey the laws of anything. Sonic and the gang go to San Fran and they see the building where the rings lay on top of. Now this next part is just dumb, okay? Sonic runs to the building and then he runs back saying, No good. They won't open the doors to just anybody and I'm just sitting here watching the movie like, Wait, hold on, hold on. Don't you have super speed? Can't you just run up the outside of the building and get to the top that way? But if they do that, then the movie will have to end much sooner and we can't have that now, can we? So Tom puts Sonic in a carrying bag, goes in the lobby of the building, tells them, I'm a cop and you have a jumper, so I gotta stop him because I'm a cop. The lady at the desk questions why a cop from Green Hills is brought to stop a jumper and not one from, you know, the San Francisco Police Department. Because, you know, they are in San Francisco and that only makes perfect sense. Tom gives a BS reason, and she kind of just goes, alright. Like, she doesn't care, you know? She's just there to get paid, and you know what? I can relate to that. I probably would have done the same thing, to be honest. So after some jokey joke jokes, they get to the top, and Sonic gets his rings back, and instead of just, you know, saying bye and Sonic getting the heck out of there, Sonic and Tom have a heart-to-heart -heart moment. They reflect on how they have grown as friends and how much they mean to each other, which is all Eggman needed to catch up to them and attack. Now, this trope isn't just an anime trope, okay? This is a trope used in just about everything, so I won't reference any animes on this, but it is definitely used in anime, along with everything else. Sonic thinks he has the upper hand because he already stopped Eggman before, seen that in anime. But Eggman has a secret weapon this time that Sonic doesn't know about, seen that in anime before. So Eggman launches a bunch of missiles and bullets at Sonic and friends, and Sonic responds by throwing Tom and his wife off the roof and then Sonic destroys the missiles and bullets, but then Eggman activates his secret weapon, which is not actually a weapon, no, it's actually the Sonic Quill. Eggman activates the Quill and his flying machine, which makes him as fast as Sonic. So now the villain has gone from perfect cell to super perfect cell. Sonic is all like, nutty, and just manages to save Tom and his wife from plummeting to their deaths. Good job, Sonic. Except Eggman is still trying to kill you, run! Sonic uses his rings to teleport to different parts of the world and eventually finds his way back to Green Hills Town to get shot by Eggman and is seemingly beaten. Tom, who is now in Green Hills too, by the way, I don't actually remember how he managed to get back there, but he's there, tries to help Sonic but doesn't stand a chance. 
And at this point, you might be thinking, man, how are they going to stop Eggman? Sonic is down and out. Well, after Eggman gives an evil monologue, as all bad guys do, Tom responds by saying some stuff, ending with the claim that Sonic is his friend. And that is all Sonic needed to wake up, and not only wake up, but power up and glow blue and shoot lightning, at which point Sonic is then able to defeat Eggman once and for all, until the sequel comes out. That's right, Sonic wins the day by the power of friendship. That is the ultimate anime trope, the anime cliché to end all anime clichés, and it was beautiful. After that, the movie ends with Sonic staying on Earth and becoming a member of Tom's family. Aww. Oh yeah, and Tails shows up, but you know, that's not important. So yeah, the Sonic movie is, uh, I think I've made some pretty good points about uh, how it's basically an anime. You got the classic anime protagonist being sent to a new world, you definitely have the weird, funny anime antagonist. You got Sonic talking to himself out loud, another anime trope by the way. You have the heart to heart moment that ends up helping the bad guy, you got the villain more powered up for the final battle. You have the good guy winning because of friendship. If that doesn't scream classic anime, I don't know what does. <laughs> Overall, I enjoyed myself watching the movie and making this video. If you want me to tackle more movies that aren't anime but basically are anime, then let me know by leaving a like or a dislike. I don't care! Although I guess a like would technically be better. Thank you for watching this video. It went fairly long, but I had a lot to say. Nevertheless, thank you again. Subscribe if you haven't, if you already have, and thank you for keeping the anime dream alive. I'm Zach, signing off for Animen, and I will see you next time.